Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Boardsy, and this is going to be the full review of the WL Mouse Beast Tex Mini. I made an initial impressions video around two weeks ago now, but uh, I just wanted to give the mouse some more testing, obviously, because there were some interesting aspects about it. Um, I just wanted to see how those um, fared with more testing. Obviously, the best comparison for this mouse is the ULX Small, but that has not released yet. Um, but size-wise, the Beast Tex Mini is going to be noticeably smaller in hand compared to the um, ULX Small, and just really any small mouse. This is going to be thinner, lower. It is just truly a small mouse. So if you're somebody who enjoys that, just wants the thinnest mouse, if you're like OG RJN pilled, and you think that thinner, lighter is automatically going to make you a better aimer, then this is a mouse to consider. On my skill, it does come in at 37 grams with this grip tape and replacement skates on. I believe it was 35 um, with the original dot skates and no grip tape. So they missed the weight estimate by one gram, burned them to the ground. Um, but yeah, really, this does not feel... I would say noticeably or impressively lighter than something like the medium size because the mouse is just so much smaller, right? And it comes in, on my scale at least, around 4 grams lighter. Compared to the ULX medium, which is 38 grams out of the box, it's like, it's not even noticeably lighter, I would say. But obviously, these are, we're just splitting hairs. The fucking 37 gram well-balanced mouse is going to be extraordinarily light. But yeah, for a mouse this light, I really don't have any complaints. The sidewalls, there's no creaking, flexing, any rattling on the mouse, um, and the weight is well balanced, like I mentioned. So, really, job well done. If it was 5 grams lighter, I do think that would be a massive leap, just considering the size of the mouse. Like, you expect it to be a little bit lighter when it's massively fucking smaller. Massively smaller? Does language work like that? Maybe. But yeah, really, it's a mouse that's hard to critique in really any aspect, aside from the shape. The holes on the side, I hated them, and the mouse just it feels too thin for me without grip tape even with the grip tape it still feels too thin but at least this makes it just comparable to the starlight small and yeah for me the only grip that's going to be viable on this mouse is fingertip and even for that it's something where it'll feel good for like half a Kovacs run but I just don't have the consistency there is like I'd say my stability on this mouse is pretty solid because I can get a good grip of it but it's just like it's too small it's too thin I feel much more comfortable when I'm using the medium size and I do have 21 by 11 centimeter hands so if you are somebody who's used to very small mouse you have smaller hands than me um, then this could very well be a viable shape, but I'm just letting um, my personal experience out there, there's really no way for me to claw grip this mouse, especially considering I have the um, glossy color, I guess that is one complaint, and I kind of have to do like a knuckle claw on this mouse, my apologies, that was an accidental click, which is something I will get into, but yeah, the only way for me to really claw grip this mouse, I have to be applying pressure with like the top of the palm, the bottom of my knuckles, I don't know how you want to consider it, but yeah, I really just can't have the hump of this mouse, I mean, you can just see it's such a flat, small, low-profile mouse, and there's really just no hump presence, and it's fucking glossy, so it's just, it doesn't work, folks, for me. If you get a different colorway, and you really do enjoy aggressive, clawing, super small mice, maybe it could work, but this would not even be in, like, my fucking top 20 claw grip recommendations, and the Starlight Small is something that I was able to, like, maintain a claw grip on, even though it was not one of my top choices. So, really small, really not optimized for claw grip, um, but I'm sure some people still will pull it off. And yeah, by the way, this version I have is the only one with the glossy colorway, so if you're like me and you just despise glossy, obviously don't go for it. WL Mouse just sent it to me. I don't know if they were trolling or if they just randomly sent it. It's always hard to tell with China. Um, but yeah, one of the things on this mouse that is you're just going to love it or you're going to hate it are the light clicks. And light just isn't even a word. I wish I could just like show how little pressure I'm putting. So yeah, I wouldn't say that there's a single mouse on my desk that really rivals this in terms of light clicks. The ULX medium would probably be be a, cl a close-ish second, um, but yeah, compared to something like the GPX-2, the OP-1 Wii, which I thought the clicks were pretty light, the um, Kill GXs, it's just a different level. So I was getting some accidental presses, I was getting some slam clicks like I reported in my original video, I'm just fucking slamming the front of the mouse on my desk, um, but yeah, that is something that I, playing Fortnite, don't really notice too much. Um, I've never gotten any, like, accidental left clicks in scenarios, but if you do play TAC FPS, low sense, resetting your mouse a lot, I could totally see the occasional accidental slam click kind of fucking you over. And some of my friends who have this mouse are saying that the right click feels more sensitive than the left. I think that is just because of the way you angle your ring finger and kind of apply pressure automatically with it to stabilize your grip, but um, that could be, could be something as well. But for me, both of the clicks feel pretty much equally as light. And yeah, there's not a lot of, like, 
firm tactile response it just does feel like you're clicking and then it's rebounding instantly or you're fucking clicking again which is why i complained about in my original beast x video that the clicks were like too stiff so they listened to me but i'm like fucking goldilocks it was too heavy now these are ever so slightly too light but i'm sure that they will figure out the best click implementation but if you are just looking for light clicks on a light mouse this could i mean these are spammable they're good they're just really fucking light and yeah, quality-wise, there's truly no issues. Like, there's a l such minimal wobble. I'd, I'd say that's, like, intended variance. And the pre-travel, really not an issue. Because, like, once you just apply any pressure, you're just going to fucking click the mouse. And post-travel, you can just see there's not a lot of room for it. Nothing bad is happening. So click quality-wise. Um, these are very impressive. I did have those slam clicks and accidental clicks. But I would not say that's as big of an issue as I thought it was originally. And my camera freezes. And yeah, these are Juano Blue Shell Pink Dots, and I have truly never felt the Switch implemented in a way that even feels close to this. So whatever they're doing with the um, click tensioning at WL mouse, I don't know, it's, it's something interesting. Um, but yeah, next up is going to be the side buttons. Originally, the Beast X had a lot of side button wobble, but it seems that's been addressed. You can see, like, Mouse 4, there's a little bit of wobble. That's really only when I go for it. These are very light. They're in a good position. I I'm not using this mouse a ton in Fortnite, but if I do have to, like, do, like, a relaxed fingertip grip, um, the positioning's right there. If I'm claw gripping, I mean, they're easy to access as well, but I just can't pull off a claw grip on this mouse, like I mentioned. So I don't think there are really going to be any issues with the side buttons. Positioning's good lightness of them is good and yeah the quality of them is also solid the scroll wheel um i haven't really talked about it too much on wl mouse mice but it does feel kind of cheap it's just like it just feels very generic i feel like they could do like add a little bit of flair to it i don't even know what that would be like i'm trying to think like what's a good scroll wheel i don't fucking know i'm not a scroll wheel snob all i know is that this one it's just like it's very it's not stiff feeling the click is light and it scrolls so like i don't have too many complaints but it's like it's just wow it is a yeah i want to seem like i'm nitpicking but i've just seen people complain about it and when you scroll it you just know you're like this just feels kind of archaic and generic but it fucking works it scrolls so at the end of the day that's kind of what matters and yeah i think that about covers everything for the top of the mouse now we can flip it over um in terms of the skates they obviously have a relatively flat bottom for you to put whatever you want i've been a big advocate of putting final mouse skates on the wl mouse it just makes the most sense to me um the stock dot skates they come with do have an invisible film so a few videos back i was like the stock skates are trash and i just immediately took them off i didn't notice the film they're all right but i would just recommend putting your own skates they do provide like a plethora of fucking glass skate black ptfe option so it's like yeah you can uh, there's a lot of freedom when it comes to the skates on this mouse the sensor is a 3395 you can see the positioning it looks like i don't know if it was like raised a little bit maybe it would have a slightly forward sensor position and that could be cool but i don't really have any issues it does more or less line up with my thumb and regarding the sensor implementation the 4k i actually have had no hiccups i was using this mouse primarily though on high speed mode on a thousand hertz pulling rate i just i don't know why i have become anti-motion sync pilled so i took that off and really just running this mouse on any polling rate any configuration the wireless feels fine um it's not something where i feel like it's ahead of the competition by miles but click latency motion latency it all feels dialed in if anything it feels like you have negative click latency because it's sub 1 ms as it is and then you have such light clicks like you're just gonna be clicking before you're even on the target so um you might even want to add a few ms of debounce time to account for that I'm kidding, by the way. I feel like, because people who don't speak English as their first language always take what I say as gospel, and it's like, that really ruins the fun of sarcasm for me. Um, but yeah, sensor-wise, there's just no issues with this mouse on the software. I did a firmware update the first day I got the mouse. Um, some people are saying they had issues with that. I don't know how. I just downloaded it from their website and ran it as is. Um, but yeah, really, tech-wise, this mouse is solid. It is a $150 mouse, so that is, that's what you'd expect. I think there are some $140 variants, but... And yeah, how could I forget that they actually gave a cat dongle, which, in my opinion, is so much better than the fucking giant Rubik's Cube dongle. I mean, here that is with my final mouse dongle on top of it. I mean, it's, it was too big. So the cat, I appreciate that. I once had a cat in my life. So yeah, really, that is much better, in my opinion, than the Rubik's Cube. I'm sure that's a bigger issue to me than most people, just because desk dongle real estate is a real fucking issue in my life. Um, but yeah, really, no complaints with that dongle. No complaints with the wireless signal. 
um, really all around. If this mouse was just a little bit bigger, it would be, I'm not going to say my main, but it would be something that I would consistently use would be in the contention for like my favorite mouse, but it just ultimately is a little bit too tiny. And you know, this is the mini version of the mouse and I don't have many hands. So maybe that's what I should expect, but I am somebody who's been used to using smaller mice. I mean, even the OP one is a very thin mouse, but this is just like the clicks. It's just another level of lightness and thinness. And yeah, you can see it next to the Viper Mini Signature as well. That is, it's just a fucking massive mouse in comparison. So I can't stress enough that this mouse is tiny. Um, I have seen a lot of females, though, on Twitter um, using this mouse. So maybe this is the number one mouse for women. Um, we finally have a new answer from the video I made a few months ago. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of just rambling at this point. I don't know what else there is to say. The build quality is good. Like, just everything about this mouse is good, aside from the potential accidental, like, slam clicking issues and subjectively the size is a little bit too small. So yeah, in conclusion, I will be giving the Beastex Mini the seal of approval. I can't stress it enough though, like you do have to want just a genuinely narrow, tiny, small, small mouse. Um, for this to be a viable option for you, but if that's what you're going for, I mean, this is one of the best small mice on the market. It's top tier, absolutely. Just look at the size compared to a GPX. Like, I feel like that really puts into perspective just how little actual mouse that you are going to be getting. But yeah, I don't know what else I need to say for this video. The grip tape, in my opinion, at least with the glossy colorway, was a must. Um, but yeah, that's all I got to say. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Any other questions, leave them in the comments below. And that's going to be all. Peace.